This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. This recent extension of a fire tax in Cape Girardeau will help the city maintain its public safety equipment. It also means there's now funding for a new police station. Here to talk about this and other issues facing this city is Cape Girardeau City Manager Scott Meyer. Scott, thank you so much for coming to talk with us. It's always good to be here, Jacob. Well, let's talk a little bit about this fire tax that was that was just uh, extended by by uh, by Cape Girardeau voters. Mm -hmm. What will this what will this uh, fire tax be used for in with relation to public safety? Well, first of all, I just want to thank the, the voters. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time telling voters what, what it would do, and, uh, and they uh, have shown confidence and support for public safety. So we want to thank them for that. What will it do? Well, it supports uh, the capital improvement portion of public safety. And so that's, that's the equipment and facilities needed in order to do those operations. So uh, I guess the, the, one of the cornerstone projects is the Curry Lane Fire Station. Uh, going to replace that station and then a new police station. So those are the, the two big facilities where you have some uh, improvements to uh, some, the, some other fire stations, but those are the major ones uh, as far as facilities go. Well, let, let's get into the, that police station issue a, mm -hmm. a, a little bit because this isn't the only funding source for, for the Correct. police station. It sounds like that's coming from a few different areas, right? It is. Uh, we, we had uh, in the agreement that we had to extend the uh, uh, or to continue the restaurant tax, uh, there is five million dollars that will come from that from that uh, portion, and then we're we're taking uh, some money from uh, our casino funds for the capital portion of the casino funds to complete that study to make up eleven million dollars, which then established as a budget in order to build uh, build a new police station. Now, uh, the study said that that was going to cost in the fifteen million dollar range, so uh, we are certainly focused and have charged them with bringing those costs down. They have some good cost saving. Uh, mechanisms to do that. We're going to continue to look for ways to bring those costs down to get as much of the police station as we possibly can. So are things still pretty preliminary right now with uh, with the police station then? Uh, yes, we're looking at, uh, at locations. We'll be looking at uh, final, you know, final designs. We'll, we'll hire an architect to come in and begin to go through those details and set up uh, con construction documents uh, to be bid and then uh, to build. Now the Curry, the Curry Lane station. Why did that need to be replaced? Well, it was built, uh, I believe, in the 70s, and uh, just our equipment almost won't even fit in that building, and it really limits what equipment we can buy. So uh, it, it's an it's an old neighborhood uh, fire station. It's the way they were built in, but uh, with the equipment needed to safely uh, and quickly extinguish fires to to do the things we need to do, you need bigger and better equipment and also the facilities uh, with a, uh, a workforce that is now both male and female. Uh, there are things that we need to do uh, better there. So we'll be uh, upgrading that to a larger facility and a better facility. Of course, that's also where a lot of our city has grown. So uh, in order to maintain that closeness to the citizens, it's really imperative that we replace that station. Well, let's talk a little bit about this uh, indoor sports complex idea. Um, this is going to be funded by the same by the same tax that's um, provided, like the, the Show Me Center, mm -hmm. the, the River Campus, Osage Center. A lot of big, um, really big projects in Cape Girardeau. Yes. Big tourism projects. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the what's the preliminary design? The preliminary ideas about this indoor sports complex? What's this going to What's this going to well, be about? Uh, the, the really the idea of the indoor sports complex is one that that is uh, that that is somewhere where people can have almost outdoor play inside and to have a big enough facility where uh, large tournaments can be held and uh, even provide turf space in the in the winter so that soccer and things like that can happen in the winter time so it really is key to bringing in tournaments and continuing to establish as a regional hub and uh, to really fill up uh, uh, and keep the uh, 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 tourism going during those winter months which are are kind of lower months that we have now and so it really is key economically, as well as uh, continuing to establish yourself as that regional hub and, uh, and youth sports and, uh, and sports and these tournaments and traveling teams are a, are a big draw and uh, other cities have been very successful at, uh, at having this type of facility. Well, what do we know um, at this point as to where the, where the complex could be, um, how much it would cost, like the square footage and things like that? Well, we're, uh, we're really looking at, at, again, a lot of different ideas because we, again, want to make the most of the money that's available. It appears that uh, somewhere in the $12 million range is what, uh, what they're talking about. And uh, so we're really looking at, at all possibilities. And 
actually have asked people if they have land or ideas or if they're a developer and say, well, I would like to put some, some private development around such a type of facility. We'd love to hear ideas. So uh, I think we're going to be even advertising and asking people to, to bring ideas. Uh, we have some ideas of our own that uh, we're looking at as well. But uh, we, we see it as an opportunity to not only uh, have this facility, but maybe even to leverage it into something bigger should we be able to find a partner to help us do that as well. Let's talk a little bit about the um, the wastewater treatment plant. The brand new wastewater treatment plant construction mm -hmm. is almost complete on mm -hmm. this. Um, yeah. When will this when will this new facility be online? Well, uh, we actually start diverting the uh, the wastewater into the plant uh, a week uh, uh, from today, early uh, December. Uh, I believe December eighth or ninth, somewhere in that time frame, and uh, and that will start uh, the work going there. But uh, the whole process takes a long time. It'll be actually several months before we'll start actually drying the sludge as the byproduct of, of it. And uh, so for that to be going, it'll take several months to do. And then we're going to open it up and have, have uh, some tours and things. But uh, we are right there to get started with the first part of the process. And that's not something where you flip a switch and then all of a sudden you're... <laughs> you're 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 using the new the new plant. Not right? not in its totality, but uh, you we, we will start diverting uh, the current wastewater into the new plant, and that w it will it'll take all of it. So uh, once you switch the switch, there's all there's no turning back in case you think about it that way. R real quickly, the um, transportation trust fund four um, mm -hmm. expires next year. What's left on that project, or which projects are left? Uh, which on, projects on are left on that? I believe uh, we have. Um, Veterans Memorial Drive, uh, the extension of that, um, uh, Bloomfield Road, and I believe some things along West End. There's some smaller projects, but typically this has been the case. By the time it's a, it's been a five-year program in the past, and by the time we, we do it as pay as you go, we don't borrow money against that. So uh, by the time you get near the end where you need to start talking about that, there's always a few projects that we haven't done yet, but we've always been good to uh, to hold to our commitment and get those projects done. We've been talking today with Scott Meyer. He's Cape Girardeau City Manager. Scott, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Always great to be here, Jacob. Ahead, health and fitness in Cape Girardeau. That's coming up on Cape Chronicle.